This is the fifth section of chapter four on graphs and transformations. And this section is about translating graphs. Now there are two different types of translations that we need to know about. The first is where we see the graph of a function and then we see a number plus something like a. So maybe we've got this graph sketched and then uh, part of the question says, can you sketch this and then you see an extra number added or subtracted on the end. OK, so what this does, it moves the graph of f of x, so just this part here, up by a. Now, if a is positive, the graph will just move up by that many uh, squares. If the value of a is negative, it will move down by that many squares. So if a is five, the whole graph will move up by five squares. If it was like negative three, the whole graph will move down by three squares and we can represent this movement as a translation vector which would be 0a no movement in the x direction but a movement by a in the y direction so the second translation is y equals f and then x plus a so notice here the a is in a different place it's in the brackets now what this does, it moves the graph of f of x to the left by a. So just take a note of that. You'd expect it to move it to the right because that's the way that um, x increases, but it actually moves in the opposite direction. So when a is positive, the graph moves to the left. When a is negative, the graph moves to the right. And this can be represented by this translation vector, negative a, zero. So move in the x direction, but not in the y direction. And the last thing with translations is that if we have any graph with asymptotes like y equals one over x, then the asymptotes are translated as well. And we use the same translation with the asymptotes because they're actually part of the graph. So translate those in the same way you translate the rest of the graph. Example nine, we want to sketch these graphs. So the first one is the graph of y equals x squared. Now this will be easy enough to do. We don't need to work out any coordinates. I know that it's going to be a U-shaped graph going through the origin like that. So that's part A done. Part B, we have the graph of y equals x minus two. Now this is actually related to this graph. Imagine just taking the x part and replacing it with x minus two. So if I called um, my x squared, let's call that f of x, a function of x. Then what have we got? Well, x minus two squared is the same as f of x minus two. Think of it this way. I have replaced this x with an x minus two. So I replace this x with an x minus two. And I know this translation now. This is a translation that is going to move a graph this way by two squares. Why? Because it's minus two. So minus in the bracket like that moves it this way. If that was plus two, it would move in the opposite direction. So anything in the bracket here always does the opposite to what you expect it to do. So I take my original graph, I keep the shape the same, but I'm going to move it across. That means any coordinates that I've written down are going to get moved as well. Now there's a coordinate here, zero, zero. That will now become two, zero. So I'm just going to mark that down and put two here. And then I just draw my curve in like this. So it's just the whole thing's just shifted by two squares. Now it's always good practice to write down where the graph crosses the axis when we've drawn our sketches. So we want to find out where the graph crosses the y-axis. And the way we do that is we make x equal to zero into this. Okay, so if x equals zero, that's where it crosses the y-axis, that will give us y equals zero minus two all squared. So that is negative two all squared which is y equals four. So that means that this coordinate up here, that's the coordinate four.
So we should always mark in where it crosses the axis. Part C then, we have y equals x squared plus 2. Now, just like before, if um, we have x squared equals f of x, then what have we got? Well, we've not replaced x with anything. All we've done is we've added 2 on the end of x squared. We've added 2 on to the end of this. So we add 2 on to the end of this. So x squared plus 2 is the same as f of x, which is x squared, plus 2. Now, what does that do? That will move a graph up by 2 squares. So we take this graph here, we move it up by 2. So it's just going to be the same shape, but crossing the axis at 2. So we'll sketch that in. We'll just put a 2 here. And then this will be our sketch here. Example 10, uh, we've got two functions here. We want to sketch those graphs or sketch these graphs here, these translations, indicating any points where the curves cross the axis. That's the X or the Y axis. So in part A, we have this translation. Now that will take the graph of F of X and move it this way by one. So what I'm going to do is to draw the original graph of x cubed, then do this translation. So the graph of x cubed should be nice and straightforward. That's something we should know. So it's going to be this type of shape. Then what we're going to do is just shift the whole graph across by one. Now all the coordinates are going to get, sh going to get shifted. It's actually the x coordinates. So instead of crossing here at zero, it's going to cross here at negative one so we'll just draw the cubic going through there like this now i can see it crosses the axis here i want to work out what this coordinate is here so to do that we need to work out what is the equation of this curve here well we've been told that f of x equals x cubed and we've just drawn f of x plus 1. Now what's happened? The x has been replaced with x plus 1. So we take this x and we replace it with x plus 1. So it becomes x plus 1 cubed. So that green line is the graph of y equals x plus 1 all cubed. We want to know where it crosses the y-axis. And I've just noticed I've labeled up my x and y-axis incorrectly. So to find out where it crosses the y-axis, we make x equal to zero. So y equals zero plus one, all cubed. So that's basically going to be y equals one cubed. So y equals one. So it's gonna cross the axis at the coordinate zero, one. So we'll just mark this as one. And maybe at the side here, we'll put the coordinate 0, 1. Part B, I can see it's the same translation of a different function. So I'll just put here a reminder here that the graph is going to move across by 1. And uh, just like the last one, we're going to sketch this graph and then we'll sketch its translation. So the first thing to do is to find out where this graph crosses the x and the y axis we draw the original graph okay so let's start by making x equal to zero so if we make x equal to zero in this that will give us y equals zero so it tells us the graph crosses or goes through the origin let's put across there and now we'll make y equal to zero um, and that will give us zero equals so we've just replaced g of x with y x times by x minus 2 so when does this equal 0 well either when x equals 0 or when x minus 2 equals 0 which means that x equals 2 so the coordinates that gives us is 0 0 which we've got already and then the other coordinate is 2 0 2 0 so we'll just mark down on our 
sketch here and put there two. So we now need to draw a U-shaped quadratic going through these two points here, like this. And then the translation, as we said, is going to move the graph across by one in this direction. Now, what does that mean? Now, rather than it crossing at zero and two, it's now going to cross at negative one. So both of these are going to move across that way by one and one. So negative one here and one here. So let's draw that um, quadratic. Let's try and draw that a bit better. So it actually goes through the point. So here and here. So the green one is the one that we're interested. In. That's the translation. Now I've indicated here the points where it crosses the axis. So maybe I'll just write that down. So I'll just put down y equals g of x plus 1 crosses the axis at x. Well, let's write the coordinates down. Um, negative 1, 0 and 1, 0. Let's make that 0 look more like a 0 not a backward six. Example 11, given that h of x equals one over x, sketch the curve with equ equation h of x plus one, and state the equations of any asymptotes and intersections with the axis. So I'm gonna start by sketching the graph of y equals, or h of x equals one over x. So that's just going to be the reciprocal graph like that. So we'll just label this as y equals one over x. Now, this translation here, the one is not in the bracket. So this is one that moves the graph up by one. Now, because this graph has got asymptotes, the asymptotes are also gonna move it up by one. Now, the asymptotes are actually hidden they're like exactly on where the axes are. So if I move the whole thing up by one, this hidden asymptote here is now going to become unhidden and it's going to appear here. But the one on the y axis will remain hidden because we're just moving it up and it's staying on the y axis. So we're now drawing the graph here with this new asymptote. So one there. And one here like this then what we need to do is label the asymptote and that's the line y equals one and then work out the coordinate of this point here where the graph crosses the x-axis so first of all we need to know what the equation of the green line is well it's like the equation of the red line plus one. So we want to find out where this graph crosses the x-axis. So the graph y equals one over x plus one crosses the x-axis uh, when y equals zero. So what we'll do, we'll replace y with zero and solve this for x. So that will give us one over x equals negative one. If you times both sides by x, we will get um, negative x equals one, which means that x equals negative one. And we would expect it to be a negative because of its position over here. So we'll just label that as negative one and we'll put down the actual coordinate of intersection as the point negative one, zero. Now, since the uh, asymptote along the y-axis hasn't changed, we're still gonna mark it in like this. And then we'll also state that the asymptote is x equals zero. Now, what I'll do is if I just take out the red one, then you can see what my 
answer should look like. So if you are going to draw the original graph, draw the translation on a separate graph. Don't draw them on the same one because it gets confusing. I'm doing it so you can see. But when you do it, draw the original graph and your translation on separate uh, grids, on separate sketches. You should now be able to do exercise 4E on pages 74 to 75.